So we mentioned concurrency, and uh, concurrency essentially, there are types of concurrency. So let's talk about this. I can use my second uh, uh, second whiteboard as a you know temporary drawing board. All right. So let me just uh, 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 let me just uh, take this and uh, and try to experiment with this. Um, I'll just uh, use this area for different types of concurrencies um, and um, clear this up. Okay, so let's talk about concurrency and let's talk about these scenarios of uh, concurrent, uh, I would think, uh, first of all, uh, uh, concurrency Uh, what is concurrency? There are two types, or maybe even three different types. You can have an application, uh, and actually I would like to use four types in uh, this case. Uh, say you have a console, console type of application. Usually console type of application is something that you can use like in a batch or, or script that does, uh, that basically is a utility program. Right. So typically, it, 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 the console program has just only one single thread of execution, and concurrency there simply isn't uh, doesn't exist. Right. There's zero concurrency. There's one thread of execution. It basically is something that we've been writing since our first day in class when we try to to to, to write uh, computer programs. Just basically one program, one task one single thread of execution, right? Console style, so console fits that, that description pretty well. Okay, and of course console could too create multiple threads. But anyway, mm, uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, concurrency uh, application, most likely a window, right? Graphical user interface application, where for instance, uh, you have user enter your data, over here, right, in some sort of like a spreadsheet style, uh, and you want to do certain computations. So you have a button for them, right? So they can they can they can say compute or something and click this button. So interestingly, if you still have one thread of execution in this situation, um, and you begin so this button goes off and does long, 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 you know, uh, first of all, connects to the database, right? It retrieves some data, and then does a lot of looping through the data multiple, multiple, multiple times before it returns back and displays the result, right? If that's the case, so it's just some sort of lengthy process behind this button click, which could take uh, sometimes seconds, sometimes hours, sometimes, you know, overnight, type of thing. Uh, if you do this uh, processing uh, on the thread of execution, which is responsible for user interface, uh, the health of the user interface, this is not going to be a good experience for your user. You want to do all of this on the, on the worker thread, right? So you need to have one thread of execution and another thread of execution, which is responsible for all of this, whereas the the user interface thread, thread, of, uh, thread of execution is responsible for user interface, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, actions. Uh, button clicks, keyboard strokes, um, uh, you know, mm, uh, other types of touch screens and so forth, right? Uh, so um, you want to uh, be able to, to do things concurrently like this, right? So um, because you just simply don't want to, uh, to tie up your user interface by some kind of lengthy computation or database uh, work and so forth. Right, so that's the situation where you your console application with one thread, all of a sudden you have a need for multi-threaded applications. And this can have multiple uh, forms. Uh, for example, uh, over here you can have uh, an application uh, that uh, uh, simply uh, wants to refresh itself uh, as often as, I don't know, 60 frames per second or maybe once a second. 
So then again, most likely you should have a background thread which uh, basically notifies this window that uh, you want to do the update and, uh, and you uh, keep updating it with a certain period of, you know, inter interval of time, right? So that uh, creates an idea that you may have a, uh, you may you may have a need for multi-threaded applications. Another another situation with concurrency, which is kind of similar to this one. So I'm actually going to draw this in the, uh, you know uh, 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 next to to this window in the same category where you have your web server, right? You have your web server uh, server over here and so this web server sits and listens for uh, connections from the internet right and uh, so it's basically there is one thread of execution over here which constantly listens for the for 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 um, web browser connections who want to retrieve resources of this web server but it's it would be very natural to to actually to to receive um, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the say HTTP request and delegate the work to a separate thread of execution, right? So essentially, every time, so multiple users could be uh, could be uh, trying to connect to this web server. There is one listener thread, uh, but every time the actual service of that request is done on a on a separate thread, right? So essentially, then uh, the information comes back directly to to the requester. Uh, but it comes from a dedicated thread, okay? And so the web server uh, and any kind of server application, database server the same way, uh, you may want to uh, essentially create a worker thread delegated to a specific request and uh, only listen on one thread but then respond on different threads which is uh, pretty much how uh, most of the uh, web servers and uh, 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 and database servers are implemented. Okay, so clearly, clearly, the need for concurrency here is not because you have a single user in front of this window, but because you have multiple users trying to talk to you remotely, and uh, you still have this process that has multiple threads uh, to uh, to manage uh, uh, your 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 client uh, connections. All right. Another, another type of concurrency is when you have some service processes on the same compu uh, uh, computer, right? So besides having uh, you know, separate uh, uh, threads of execution in some instances, uh, you may have um, uh, separate processes uh, with uh, their own uh, threads uh, of execution over here, but concurrency also means that that you can have interoperating uh, interoperating processes on the same computer, and ultimately you can consider concurrency when you have separate computers, right? Uh, separate computers, say on intranet or in some office or on the internet, and they try to do things synchronously, right? So say they they want to they want to this computer sends information to this computer, this computer sends information to this computer, this computer returns information to another computer, and this one finally gets the final say to do something, right? So this all needs to be synchronized because before this essentially you need to somehow organize this flow of data. Does this require concurrency uh, considerations? We, as soon as you begin to realize that something has to happen before something else, that is indicator of uh, uh, the needs for concurrency. And so internally, so concurrency is not just um, uh, overall, concurrency is not just uh, a fact that you have that you can have multiple processes, whether running on the same computer, on the same box, or on multiple computers, uh, or multiple threads within the same process, so that one process can have a lot of parallel threads of execution, execution doing something different. Uh, so, so of course. Multi-threading, multi-processing is one aspect, right? Right. So, uh, multi-threading, uh, multi-processing is one aspect of it. I can throw in multi-user uh, aspect of it into this category as well. But and additionally, 
the challenge is, is that how do you synchronize, right? How do you synchronize all of this? How do you make it all be aware of, uh, you know, uh, sometimes these par parallel uh, executions have to cooperate, have to respect one another, and not just uh, like randomly, you know, access any memory location and do whatever they need to to, to change it or, or retrieve the data. Uh, it's it's likely to be a much higher challenge with any kind of con concurrent uh, situ uh, situation. So how do you solve this? Uh, you know the the challenges of synchronization. Uh, one solution will be make any everything sequential, right? You can say, okay, here's my, here's my here's my class, right? And uh, uh, here's my m method of my class. Y you can ask your uh, programming language is that if you have multiple threads of execution running and all of them are trying to call this method in this specific class this is of course not UML it's just my my demonstration of, of an idea of sequential a um, access that instead of allowing these multiple threads to run this method in any order uh, what needs to happen is that instead they all going to be uh, standing in queue and uh, uh, waiting for it for their own turn to execute that method. That would guarantee that if this method makes us some changes, uh, you know, somewhere in computer memory, uh, these changes will be safe to make because even if even though we have this parallel environment with multiple threads of execution, all of the updates will be se uh, sequential. And that's the most primitive type of, of uh, you know, um, uh, uh, synchronization using uh, sequencing. Basically saying, okay, if someone wants to call this method, uh, they all have to take their turns to do the work. And programming language can handle that in many cases. You just declare certain methods, uh, method to be synchronized, and uh, it becomes uh, uh, sequential access for multiple threads. However, something like this in most critical aspects of your application can become a bottleneck. Could be then hitting you back with slowing down your user interface and having impact on other, you know, he healthy uh, aspects of your system. So this is simple, but not uh, very effective. Uh, another type of synchronization is guarded, right? So the second type of synchronization that we can discuss here is guarded. Basically, uh, instead of serializing all of this, what we can do is um, we can simply declare that uh, we have a certain resource over here. And uh, what we can do is that before it can be updated, it's guarded by some kind of additional object over here, okay? And so anytime any of these threads would like to make an update to it or even read the data from it uh, by using this method or different methods in the system, they have to obtain the lock, okay? So all of them will say, okay, let me obtain the lock and successful lock opens up access to this resource. Upon completion of access to this resource, the lock is released, and therefore any other thread can continuously lock and, and access the resource. However, if, uh, if you cannot access the lock because it's already locked, you have to wait, right? So you're, you, so you're, you're, you're then you, you're placed temporarily into the waiting mode, uh, uh, and you, you will be waiting for this resource to become available. So it's unrealistic to create every single data piece as a, as a lock itself. Uh, sometimes a single lock could be protecting multiple, you know, multiple uh, pieces uh, of data uh, in your object or in your memory. Uh, and this is what we call guarded. So typically we say that you know a thread could enter into a critical section or obtain a lock or mutex and this way it will be uh, basically before it can access something it needs to ask the guard the corresponding guard uh, object whether it's okay to access it right now or do I have to wait 
So synchronous and, and sequential is synchronous is simply uh, one of the you know implementations of uh, of sequential. But uh, so I I when we consider the first case, but also there could be uh, this type of scenarios, right? Uh, we can have basically we can have multiple threads of execution that they're they all taking different time to uh, do the computation, but then they all have to arrive at some state where where they all begin to say i am done i am done i am done i am done and then the uh, the operation will uh, will continue the rest of the application will uh, continue so this is this is called a join right join a join of multiple threads uh, after they completed the work and then and then uh, collectively now we say okay we have synchronized right so we have synchronized everything and so now we can continue on right so that's the 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 synchronous uh, uh, type of uh, uh, type of access and I know that we're running out of time so we will have to finish this conversation next week but hopefully this gives you a bit of an overview of what it really means to uh, uh, in terms of the concurrency of your methods and what aspects uh, need to be considered and what environments uh, may be involved in in the aspects of uh, concurrency so uh, we should uh, finish this conversation uh, uh, later next week and uh, wrap up this presentation so i hope you have a good weekend and i'll see you guys next week